السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Back again to pattern number four in which we have SVO that is to say the subject plus the verb plus the direct object In pattern number four the type of the verb which is uh, يعني, uh, can be seen here uh, is that of a transitive verb which is different from pattern number one, uh, which is the intransitive verb. Whether I say transitive or intransitive, I mean action verbs, whether with ref reference to physical action or mental action. Okay, so uh, we say that a transitive verb is the verb that can be uh, completed or followed by um, a noun or a noun a phrase. That's to say, whenever I mention a sentence like the girl boat, and I stop talking, <coughs> sorry, I stop talking, I feel that there is something missing. The sentence is in need of a completer uh, of the uh, verb. So the verb should be completed by a noun, a pronoun, a noun a phrase, uh, to give a meaningful sentence. Okay, so it means what? That the uh, verb here is not self-sufficient. It is not enough or adequate to mention the subject plus its verb. Rather, we are in need of uh, something else to complete the meaning of the sentence. So the girl boat, and full stop, this means the girl boat what? Uh, the boy met and full stop the boy met whom okay so I'm in need of what uh, يعني a noun a noun phrase or a, a pronoun to complete the meaning of the sentence so uh, the transitive verb as such is completed by uh, a noun or a noun phrase or even a pronoun to uh, make the sentence meaningful and grammatical so the completer here of the verb, that's to say the noun phrase here, is called as the direct object. So what occurs after the transitive verb is called as the uh, direct object. So the grammatical meaning of the subject in this part, in part number four, is the performer of the action, the doer of the action. Who is responsible now for buying the dress? Of course, the subject that is the girl in this example. Okay, so the grammatical uh, uh, meaning of the subject in pattern four is similar to the grammatical meaning of the subject in pattern number one with intransitive verb. Okay, what about the... Uh, يعني third element in pattern number four, I mean the direct object. What's the grammatical meaning of the direct object in pattern number four? It has the meaning, uh, that is the grammatical meaning, I mean, the undergoer of the action. It means what? That the it uh, goes under the action uh, performed by the uh, subject, okay? Or... Uh, it is here, the direct object could have the grammatical meaning of that which is affected by the action of the verb phrase. It means it is under the effect of the action. But sometimes we can see not all direct objects to be, yani to experience such an effect. Now in a sentence, the, go, uh, the girl bought a dress, so the dress in, is under the effect or under the action of the subject. It is affected by the subject, the girl, okay? Uh, but once I say, for example, uh, we heard the radio, we heard the radio, we hear the radio, uh, we, the subject, uh, hear the transitive verb. Why? Because it is followed by the direct object, the radio. Here, the radio, though it is the direct object, here it is still here. Um, it doesn't always experience any actual action. That's to say, it shows no uh, real action. Okay? So, but it is what? The direct 
object of the sentence. Okay. The uh, some we said what uh, the direct object can have different forms, different forms, uh, function. I mean, different forms related to the direct object. I can see a pronoun uh, occurring as the direct object. I see a noun occurring as the direct object. A noun phrase functioning as a direct object. So, the girl bought a dress. A dress is the noun phrase functioning as a direct object. The girl met Layla. Layla is a direct uh, object in the form of a proper noun. Okay? Sometimes we see what? We see a pronoun uh, occurring as a direct object. I met Ali. I met him. I met Ali. I met him. So this means what? That I'm going to see pronouns uh, functioning as a direct object. And which type of pronouns? We are going to see uh, personal pronouns in the objective form. The same as him, her, them, it. Okay? So they function as me and me function as direct objects of the sentence following the transitive verbs. Okay. Whether I say <coughs> a noun, a noun a phrase, or a pronoun functioning as a direct object, the two nouns, I mean the subject as well as the direct object, both of them have different references. They don't refer to the same person. They don't refer to the uh, per same thing. Two different uh, nouns. So, the girl bought a dress. The girl and a dress, both of them, <coughs> they don't uh, have the same reference. Okay? But sometimes we can see that the subject and the direct object might refer to the same uh, person or uh, here uh, we can say that the subject as well as the direct object uh, have the same reference where can we see such a, um, a reference similar reference we see it if the direct object is one of two how is that if the direct object is a reflexive pronoun the same as i say herself himself myself themselves okay so this means what that they have the subject plus its uh, its direct object have the same reference the same as we say she saw herself she and herself refer to the same person. Layla so herself. So herself is Layla and Layla is herself. Okay? The lifeguards <coughs> splash themselves. So themselves and lifeguards, they have the same reference. So if the direct object is a reflexive pronoun, this means that this direct object re refers to the subject and this subject has the same reference with the direct object. Okay. This is number one. If it is a, a reflexive pronoun, there might exist a, a, some sort of similarity between the subject and the direct object. The second type of pronouns that uh, have that can uh, function as a direct object and have the same reference with the subject is uh, a reciprocal pronoun a reciprocal pronoun the same as each other or one another each other and one uh, another the way each uh, other and one other, they can function as direct object. Once they function as direct object, this means that they have the same reference with the subject. Okay, so they found each other. Tom and Sam 
found each other. So each other refer to Tom and Sam, and Tom and Sam refer to each other. They fought when, uh, sorry, they fought one another. They fought one uh, another. Again, one another has the same reference with the subject that is they. So in these two cases, we can see that the subject and the direct object have the same reference. Away from these two types of pronouns, we see that the subject and the direct object are different as far as reference is concerned. Okay? Sometimes we can see that certain verbs might function differently i mean certain action verbs for the majority for the majority of action verbs we can see that they can be both transitive and intransitive so most of the action verbs this means what that most of the action verbs can be both transitive and in the transitive. So whenever I say she sang beautifully in the transitive verb, I can say she sang a beautiful form, for example, song. So in the first example, she sang beautifully, it is a, a in the transitive verb. In the transitive verb. But in she sang a beautiful folk, a folk sorry, song, here uh, sang here is what considered as a transitive verb okay the first one is pattern number one the second one is pattern number four so here sing could be transitive and in a transitive once it is followed by a noun in a phrase so it is called as a transitive once it is followed by just an adverbial or without an adverbial so it means it is what uh, in transit, there is no need for a completer of the subject. Okay. So we say what? The majority of action verbs could be both transitive and intransitive. But, uh, relatively, few of the yani English verbs can be only in a transitive. And few of them could be only transitive that's to say a small group of um, action verbs can be only transitive another small group of uh, action verbs can be transitive okay so if it is only t um, any intransitive we can say the example the ship had vanished so we va with uh, vanish as a verb the meaning will be completed that say ended so there is no need to add a completer of the noun okay sometimes we can see a verb that is only transitive the same as we say we enjoy the party we enjoyed the party we the subject enjoyed the verb the party is the object okay so again a few and relatively few verbs can be only at, uh, in transitive others can be only in transitive but the majority of the english verbs uh, can be both transitive <coughs> and in transitive okay this is a relation to uh, being transitive in transitive only or both one of the characteristics uh, of uh, english transitive verbs <clears throat> is that they have two forms with reference to voice. That's to say, the sentence with a transitive verb can be changed from uh, an active sentence into a passive sentence. So uh, transitive verbs have two forms. The first one is the active one. The second is the passive form. Okay. And we have, uh, yani, for example, we have um, rules to say that the sentence can be changed from active into passive. Why do, why do we say uh, that uh, transitive verbs have two forms, the active and passive? Because we know that transitive verbs are followed by di direct objects. 
In order to change a sentence from active into passive one, we are in need of what? Of a direct object. So this is why we say that transitive verbs are of two forms. Of course, putting in your mind that not all English sentences can be changed from active into passive, though they have direct objects. With yani a group of uh, uh, verbs, like for example, have, consist of, uh, yani possess, includes, though they are followed by direct objects, yet still such a kind of sentences can cannot be changed into passive uh, form. Okay, so there will be what certain uh, yani rules to be followed in order to change the sentence from active into passive, but keep in mind that whenever I change, I should put in my consideration that there must exist a direct object. That's to say, <coughs> the sentence must uh, contain uh, a transitive verb. Okay, so if I'm going to change the sentence from active into passive, the first thing is that I'm going to pick up the direct object in, uh, of, the pa of the active sentence in order to be the subject of the passive sentence. This is number one. Number two, the form of the verb will be changed. How is that? I'm going to look at the tense of the sentence well. Then I'm going to add be plus past participle form of the verb. So, uh, the chef cooked the meal. So, the meal will be the subject of the passive uh, sentence. Uh, the tense of the sentence is that of the past simple. So, it will be changed into be plus uh, past participle. Be, we will select was. Why? Because uh, cooked, not cooks, for example. Okay. So, the meal was cooked. So, a change from cooked into was cooked. To say that it is changed from active into passive, that's to say that it is done, it is was, يعني, it was done by someone يعني, else. Okay, this is as far as the form of the verb is concerned. What else? The uh, subject of the active sentence, that's the chef, might be the object of the uh, passive sentence. Which means what? I might mention the subject of the active sentence preceded by the preposition by, and it is written between two prags to say it is optional. I might mention it or I might not mention it. Why? Because it depends. If I would like to clarify the subject, I might add by plus the subject of the active sentence. So what do we have here? We have a shift, a change, that's to say... In the grammatical meanings of the subject and the direct object. So the grammatical meaning of the subject in the active sentence is that the performer of the action. Whereas uh, the grammatical meaning of the direct object uh, in the active sentence is that and the goer of the action. In passive sentences, any uh, the performer of the action, that is the shift, will be changed, grammatically speaking, as far as meaning is concerned, into the object of the proposition. Okay? And the endagawa, which is the meal, is going to be the subject of the passive sentence, not the performer of the action. Because if I'm going to tackle it, Again and again, whether I say the cook, the chef cooked the meal, or the meal was cooked by the chef, the two sentences carry the same meaning. Which meaning is that there is an action done by the chef, okay? But a change in positions, a change in what functions, as far as being the subject of the passive sentence or the subject of the adjective uh, of the active sentence, okay? Uh, Let's now um, yani, take certain um, yani, examples to change them uh, into uh, what um, yani, passive sentences, okay? Let's take the, sorry, the examples which are mentioned. Let me see where are they. Okay, here. The uh, driver turned the car around. The driver turned the car around. So the driver is uh, the subject. Turned is the verb, transitive verb. The car is the direct object. Okay, how to change it? The car will be the subject of the passive sentence. 
Okay, the tense of the sentence is what? Is uh, past simple. So, turned will be was turned. Okay, turned will be uh, was turned. And I can say by, by the driver. So, the car was turned uh, sharply around, sorry, uh, around by the driver so what do we do here we change the positions of the subject and the direct object and change the form of the uh, verb here uh, as being b plus past participle form of the verb okay if i would like to change from passive into active from passive into active suppose that i have a sentence um yani uh, yani a sentence like the flag had been lowered the flag had been lowered that's to say someone uh, this means what someone had lowered the flag someone had lowered the lowered the flag the flag had been uh, lowered it means what that someone had uh, lowered the flag okay so this is the way how to change from active into passive or from passive into active Okay, there is something that is mentioned on page 236 concerning the substitution of V by get. Leave this. We will stick just to the change from active into passive with reference to pattern number four. This is the end of uh, pattern uh, number four. I will see you with reference to pattern number Five, thank you for listening.